Hi, everybody. I'm Mike McCrory, and this is Would You Make It? A viewer reached out to me and asked me if I could make a wooden handle for his meat cleaver. So he sent it to me. It's a pretty large one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the scales. So that's the wooden portion of the handle. And I'm going to make that out of Bolivian rosewood because that's a wood that holds up well in a wet environment. And I'm also going to clean up the blade to give it a mirror-like finish. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it looks like somebody used this as a hammer at one point to whack something. And um, I need to clean up the spine of, of the knife. I'm also going to clean up the tang. That's the metal portion of the handle. And I'm going to flatten it because right now it's a little bit wavy. And I want to have a flat surface so, so that the scales will adhere well. I'm going to start by cutting off these pins. And I believe they are 7 seconds of an inch in diameter. And so I will get a quarter inch pin. I'll drill out the holes a little bit larger and then the pins will fit in the existing holes. And that's a lot easier than me having to re-drill new holes. So let's get started. I'm using this Dremel saw max to cut off the pins. It makes it an easy job and then I tap the pins out using a nail set. And now it's just a long process of sanding. I'm starting with the tang to make it flat and then I'll get to work on the blade. I cleaned up the spine the best I could without removing too much material, but I wanted to get those big nicks out of it. After finishing up with the belt sander to get all the big scratches out, I moved over to hand sanding. I started with 150 grit and I worked my way up to 800 grit. And the purpose of each of those steps was to remove the scratches left behind from the previous grit. Starting at 320 grit, I laid down a towel to reduce the chances of additional scratches being introduced. After using the 800 grit sandpaper, which is the finest sandpaper I have, I moved over to these micro mesh pads. They are two inch pads that range in abrasiveness from 1500 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit. This is after using the 3600 grit pad and now I can begin to see my reflection in the steel. After working my way through all the grits, I moved over to the buffing wheel and I'm using a green buffing compound as well. You have to be very careful at this point because if the buffing wheel were to grab the edge of the blade, then it could pull it out of your hands.
Now I'm cutting this piece of rosewood for the scales, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to shape it yet, so I'm going to leave it full thickness to give me as many options as possible. I put some double-sided tape onto the tang, and I'm attaching one piece of the rosewood, and then I'll head over to the drill press and drill through the existing holes of the tang. I didn't record this part, but I already drilled through the existing holes on the tang, and I increased them to be a quarter inch in diameter. After drilling through the first scale, I attach the other scale with double-sided tape, and then I flip it over, use the holes that I just drilled so that I can drill all the way through and have the holes lined up. I have a single brass pin, so I'm going to cut it into three pieces and then insert it through the holes that I just drilled. I've removed the double-sided tape, and now I'm using epoxy to fasten the scales to the tang. The epoxy is really not strong enough all on its own to hold the scales in place because of shear forces, and that's the purpose of the pins. I'll clamp that up overnight, and then I can begin shaping the handle. And now I will use my oscillating spindle sander to shape the handle. I use this rubber abrasive cleaner to keep the sandpaper clean. To save time on the spindle sander, I'm going to use my bandsaw to cut off some of the excess rosewood.
This knife does not have a bolster, so I'm shaping the wood to be a little bit thicker toward the heel of the blade, and that will help to minimize the chance of the hand slipping and coming in contact with the blade. And toward the end, I switched to a drum with a smaller diameter to get into this tight radius. When the meat cleaver was shipped to me via the US mail, it had almost broken out of its container. It was quite well packed, but it's so sharp and so heavy that it's pretty easy for it to break out. So that gave me the idea to make a box for the blade. I cut it to be seven inches wide and now I'm just resawing it to cut off a piece that's going to serve as the top of the box. I run everything through the drum sander. And now I'm cutting off about three eighths of an inch from each side of the piece of wood. And I'm going to cut dados into these and then glue them back on and that will provide a mechanism for the top to slide in and out. I'm not using a dado set for the dados, I'm just using a regular table saw blade, although it has a flat top grind on the teeth so that I'm getting a nice flat bottom. And now I'm tracing out the shape of the blade onto a piece of paper. I'm going to scan that into my computer and then I will import that into vCarve Pro and create the pattern that my CNC machine will use. And now the CNC machine is going to take care of all the work of cutting out the shape of the knife blade. While the CNC machine is working in the background, I sand the handle and round over the edges to make it comfortable to grip. And I just kept testing it along the way to make sure that it felt good to me. And now I'm applying some tape to the heel of the blade just to protect it. I'm going to use CA glue as the finish and I don't want to spill any of that onto the blade. The CA glue is really easy to apply. You just wipe it on and let it dry for a few minutes and then sand it off with a very fine grit sandpaper, apply another coat and then repeat three or four times. I'm using Starbond's thin CA glue for this and I really like the way that it works. It's really easy to apply and wipe. And the only thing is, as with all CA glues, you have to be careful with it because it gives off fumes pretty rapidly. And so I wiped this off and then moved away quickly because it was stinging my eyes. The CNC router is loaded with an eighth inch bit and it's cutting out the shape of the blade in four passes. And now before removing the piece of wood from the CNC, I want to make sure that everything fits. If it doesn't, I can make adjustments and have it recut. Next I'll glue on the edges and clamp it up for a few hours. I trimmed the sliding top to be a little bit narrower so that it would fit into the dados. And now I'm going to drill a hole through the top to make it easy to pull in and out. Oh. 
I slid the lid back in while it was still clamped. And now I'm going to sand it all around. And then I'll apply some mineral oil as a finish. After all that sanding and polishing, I want to make sure that the blade is still sharp. So I'm using this whetstone and it's 3000 grit on one side and 8000 on the other side. And I'm simply pulling it toward me multiple times on both sides. And then I'll flip the whetstone over to the finer side and do it again. And I only did that three or four times and it ended up to be pretty sharp already. It could be sharpened more, I'm sure, but it's pretty good. It's not quite a mirror finish, but it's come a long way from how I received it. So I gotta ask, would you make it?